Hey, I'm Kate and this is Rome.us. It's early in the morning and we're in the historical center of the Eternal City. Today I will show you 30 most important places that you have to visit during your stay in Rome. Even if you have only several days or only one day, you can repeat our itinerary within several hours. And we will start with Spanish Square or Piazza di Spagna which has its name because of the Embassy of Spain among the Holy See. This is one of the most expensive areas of Rome. One of the most beautiful, most famous and worldwide known fountains is Fontana di Trevi. This is the largest Baroque fountain in Rome. Because of the movie Three Coins into the Trevi Fountain, all tourists who come to visit this spot have a tradition of throwing coins into the water. You have to throw a coin from your right hand over the left shoulder. And the first coin means that you will come back to Rome for sure. The second coin ensures your new romance. And the third coin guarantees a marriage for you. So let's see if I'm going to marry soon. Piazza Venezia, or Venice Square, was named after Cardinal Venezia, who ordered the construction of his own place, Palazzo Venezia, in 1455. It is the center of four major roads of Rome. Behind me there is the monument made of white marble called Vittoriano, or the Altar of Nation, which was inaugurated in 1911. Inside Vittoriana you can visit military museum, beautiful observable deck and also there is the eternal flame. The statue behind me, with the man sitting on the horse, he is Vittorio Emanuele II, the first king of unified Italy. The Roman Forum or Foro Romano is the place with the ruins and ancient governmental buildings. For several centuries it was the main spot where all economical and political issues took place. And today it is located in the city center and you can see ruins from these buildings. Roman Forum was the site of triumphal processions and elections, the venue for public speeches, criminal trials and gladiators matches, and the nucleus of commercial affairs. Here monuments commemorated the city's great man. We are in the Capitoline Square, which was designed by Michelangelo Buonarroti in 1538. Roman divinities were once praised here, while today it is the headquarter of the Italian government. There are three main palaces – Palazzo Nuovo, Palazzo dei Conservatori and Palazzo Senatorio. The bronze statue behind me is Marcus Aurelius. Behind me you can see famous statue, copy of it, she wool for Lupa Capitolina. The original of it is located in Capitoline Museums, which is right near here, on Capitoline Square. The Forum of Julius Caesar was consecrated in 46 BC. It was the place for public business related to the Senate. Julius Caesar was Roman military general and politician who played an important role in transformation of the Roman Empire. We are on the Trajan's Forum and this is Trajan's Market, which is the world's oldest shopping mall. There were apartments and shops built on the multi-level structure. This is Trajan's column, which is dedicated to his victories over Dacians. Inside there is 146-step staircase with the statue of St. Peter on the top. Also, there are 2,500 images of battle over Dacians. This is the Forum of Augustus, which includes the Temple of Mars. The incompleted Forum and the Temple were inaugurated in 2nd BC. 
The forum was built to both house a temple honoring Mars and to provide another space for legal proceedings as the Roman Forum was very crowded. The Colosseum, or the Flavium Amphitheater, is perhaps the grandest construction of ancient Rome. Its construction was started in 72 AD and finished in 79 AD by Titus, the son of Flavius. During four centuries, it was the main place for entertainment in the Roman Empire with its famous gladiator battle. You can buy tickets online or in any ticket desk. The price is 12 euro and uh, you can also visit the Roman Forum, which is included in the price. The Arch of Constantine was erected in 315 in commemoration of Constantine's victory in the Battle of Milvian Bridge. It is 21 meters high and 25 meters wide and is the most modern triumphal arch of ancient Rome. The Romans constructed aqueducts throughout their empire to bring water to outside sources into towns and cities. Aqueduct water supplied fountains, private households and public bus. Aqueducts moved water through gravity alone, along a slight overall downward gradient within conduits of stone, brick or concrete. The steeper the gradient, the faster the flow. The Circus Maximus or Circo Massimo is the biggest Italian racetrack of ancient Rome. Horse racing took places here over centuries. On average, there were 250,000 of visitors. The Aventine Hill is the most expensive area of Rome. It is rich with many important churches and monasteries, but the main reason why all tourists come here is to see the key hall, where you can see at the same time three governments, Italy, the Vatican and Malta. Now we are standing in Piazza dei Cavalieri. This square was designed in 1765 by an Italian architect, Giovanni Battista Piranesi. Now we are in the Orange Garden, which was created in 1932 by Italian architect Raffaele De Vico. This is one of the most beautiful Roman observational decks. Also in December, the garden is full of oranges. The Mouse of Truth is an ancient image carved in a round marble slab. Scientists believe that the place has an age of about 2,200 years, and the Romans are convinced that it is impossible to tell a lie under a stern gaze of the mask. The Temple of Hercules is the only surviving sacred structure in Rome which was made from Greek marble. It is said to be the place where Hercules rested after his spent labor. The building became affiliated with Christianity in 1140, when Innocent III converted it into a church dedicated to San Stefano. This is the Temple of Portunus, the god of keys, doors and livestock. No one exactly knows the dedication of this temple, but it exists for more than 2,000 years. The Arch of Janus was created in 4th century BC. It was made from materials from earlier buildings. No one exactly knows why this building exists, but according to the theory, this building exists because people used to hide from the sun because there were shadows from each side. This is Marcello's theater, or Teatro Marcello. 
Its construction was begun in 1st century BC by Julius Caesar, who wanted to construct the first stone theater in Roman Empire. But unfortunately, its construction was finished by Augustus, and uh, it is dedicated to the nephew of Augustus Marcellus, who died when he was very young and didn't become an emperor because of it. Rome is full of surprises and hidden angles, so let's see what will be here. The Basilica of St. Mary of the Altar of Heaven is a titular basilica in Rome. It is still the designated church of the City Council of Rome, which uses the ancient title of Senatus Populus Ceramanus. In Roman architecture, an insula was a kind of apartment building that housed most of the urban citizen population of ancient Rome, including ordinary people of lower or middle class stages. The term was also used to mean a city block. Now we're in Jewish ghetto, located right near the historical center of the Eternal City. This is Palazzo Mattei, the palace which belonged to one of the richest Roman families. The Mattei family owned a huge collection of sculptures. This is one of the most famous Roman fountains, the Fountain of Turtles, which was designed by Taddeo Landini from 1581 to 1588. And there are four turtles and four acrobats. It's really beautiful. Largo di Torre Argentina is a notable place, since here Caesar was assassinated. Also, previously it was the sacred area with four ancient temples. Nowadays it is a cat shelter, where there are more than 200 cats, you can even adopt one. Elephant and obelisk is a sculpture by Jean Lorenzo Bernini. It is one of 13 obelisks located in Rome. You may ask, why elephant? In 2nd and 3rd centuries BC, elephants were used during panic wars. But during the times of Bernini, elephants were less common in Rome. So Bernini made this sculpture according to images of elephants that existed that day. And there are several imperfections, which you will see now. For instance, this sculpture has really long tail and trunk, different legs, and overall the elephant is small. The Pantheon is an ancient temple dedicated to all gods which embodies the greatness of Roman Empire. It is assumed that it was built in 2nd AD, but before there was a temple on this place which was built in 27 BC by Marcus Agrippa. Nowadays, there is a beautiful church located on Piazza della Rotonda. This is Piazza Navona, or the Stadium of Domitian, which is one of the most refined squares of Rome. In ancient times it was the athletic arena, where Romans used to watch games on competition, and nowadays all guests of Italian capital can visit its baroque fountains and churches. This baroque fountain from the 17th century is one of the most notable works of Bernini. It represents gods of four rivers. 
Danube, Nile, La Plata and Ganges. Many people ask, what is this beautiful building behind me? This is the Palace of Justice. Ten large statues of notable jurists adorn the rooms before the main facade and the internal courtyard. The upper part of the facade is ornamented with a bronze coat of arms of the House of Savoy. Inside the hall of the Supreme Court are several frescoes. Now we are standing on one of the most beautiful bridges in the world, the Bridge of Angels. Behind me is the Mausoleum of Hadrian, also known as the Castle of Angels or Castel Sant'Angelo. It was built during the dawn of Christianity on the banks of Tiber River and it has impressive use and grand history. The cylindrical mausoleum was the last refuge for Roman Emperor, residents of pontiffs, fortress, then prison, and later the museum and treasury. But of course, how it is possible to imagine visit to Rome without visit to the Vatican? Behind me is St. Peter's Square, its church and the dome. Also, don't forget about the Vatican Museum and Sistine Chapel. But this is another story, which you can see in our next vlog. Of course, the best time to visit all the places that you saw in this vlog is during the morning time, since there are no crowds of tourists. I invite you to our private sightseeing tour at sunrise and don't forget about likes, subscribe to our channel. I'm waiting for you in Rome. Bye!